Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Good morning. We are in the 43rd hour of the podcast of on. So there's this so, hour and the next hour. This is the last hour of Ask Dr. Doreen, and we were saving this. This is the much requested talk uh, about potty training. So in just a second, I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Grand Pichet, and she's going to give you the 411 on potty training, the definitive 411. <laughs> uh, okay, but before we do that, I want to let you know a couple of different things during this hour. We are going to be giving away another 10 gift certificates for Discovery Toys. If you have not already won a gift certificate, then you really want to be entered into this. So we're at, if you the, w the way the rules work, if you write a comment or a question, then you will, for each comment or question, you will have one ticket that's put into the hat, and at the end of the hour, we will pick out 10 more names. If you've already won, you can keep asking questions and comments. That's what you're here for, mm -hmm. right? But you won't be entered to win. But, you know, it's a great opportunity to call somebody up in your family right now and go, excuse me, why aren't you doing this That's right true. and write in a question or a comment uh, so we absolutely want we love discovery toys they make great toys the gift certificate will be for $25 it will be good on the discovery toys USA site not in stores or on Amazon or on other uh, websites and for other countries so want to be clear <laughs> about that also want to say to you this is the final hour where you guys, there's the Discovery Toy. We love Discovery Toys. This is the final hour where you can make a donation to our iPad challenge so that next hour, it's only an hour away, ladies and gentlemen, yes. boys and yes. girls, dogs and cats, uh, alert the media. If we get to the $5,000, she is going to shave my head right here, uh, right in, in this space. We have to uh, go check, see what our balance is. Yeah, so uh, put us over the top because you know that you want to see that. Uh, she wants to do it. I'm ready, willing, and able. But we want to put iPads in people's hands because communication is a right, not a privilege. So, and people need help getting iPads. So there it is. So I love the, the pulsing arrow. It's very subtle. Right? Yeah, I love it, Kevin. The, the site is givebutter.com slash iPad challenge. Uh, and of course, we'll take more than $5,000 because that's just more iPads, right? But we need to get to $5,000. The moment is now. We've got a bunch of different questions that have uh, that have come in. I love that Nava Paskowitz Asner wants to send us both to Tahiti for a week after this. Uh, thank you, Nava. Uh, I, we, that would sounds like a great deal of fun. But really, all I want to do is go to sleep in my shower. I know. That's all. That's in a, all in I about want. two hours, we yeah. know where you will be. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, asleep. But uh, can't... make sure you put a cap on because you get you might get cold. I know. There. This Bob DeMarco was on uh, during the the two to three hour this morning. He came. He journeyed to the studio. And Bob is such a tour de force from Ability Life Solutions. But he is a follically challenged gentleman. <laughs> and we were talking about the fact that I was going to look like his twin. And he was like, "It's cold out. You better get a cap." Yeah. And I didn't think to bring one. I've got one in my car. So it'll be fine. I have, in fact, I have a very pink, happy, uh, jaunty little um, baseball hat. So there, I'll, I will be. I, I, I know the drill. Uh, and I love being bald. That's, I, awesome. if That's I could, amazing. Yeah. If I could take alopecia for some poor woman who doesn't <laughs> want it, I would. I would take one for the team because I'm, I'm fine with it. You get to put a wig on, it doesn't scratch. Is this you, true? you know, I mean, it's, it's all good. <laughs> so make me bald. Come on, let's do this. Uh, but I think the funner thing is that you're going to do it. And she is so delighted about it let's make this happen because it, it will be ipads in people's hands okay so i i've said be writing in your questions and your comments so that you can win a discovery toy gift certificate for 25 dollars. Mm -hmm. but uh we're dying to hear from dr grand pichet about the definitive potty training so take it away let's do this so um yeah we do get a lot of questions about potty training and I'm gonna try to go through kind of the steps for you and tell you a little bit about how to prepare and some of the things you can do. Uh, let me start by saying that I know a lot of parents are very afraid of taking this uh, step and actually doing the toilet training, but truthfully, uh, as soon as your child is able to, it's good to do this because it really reduces a really pretty significant stressor in your life. 
and theirs and uh, gives them a lot of new abilities, you know, like a lot of schools require this before you can even yeah. attend. So, and, and we will have some time after this to answer questions as well. So let's get going. And, um, okay. So um, I'm going to ask Trayvon to see if he can move me. He's, he will. He <laughs> automatically, he, so he, he will move you around the screen. He's so good. So some of the things before you begin, one is make sure that you do a medical checkup. I mean, I know all of our kids go through checkups, but there have been situations where there was some medical factor that we were not aware of that would have prevented us or held us back. So it's important to make your, sure your child is healthy. Uh, some of the prerequisites just kind of uh, this is important because sometimes we do these, we want to teach our kids during their real life time and it just doesn't work. So ask yourself, does your child have the skills to carry out a toilet toileting routine? So for instance, does your child know where the bathroom is? Uh, does your child have the ability to pull up or down uh, pants or pull-ups? And these are things that you should separately practice, right? As, as we do in uh, ABA, we kind of break things apart and, and teach our children in small amounts. Does your child imitate? Because some of this, you may want to have your child imitate you, for instance, showing them how to wipe on a doll or showing them how to sit on the toilet. Remember, uh, if a child doesn't have any experience with the toilet, it is not uncommon for them to have a fear of the toilet. So just make sure some of those things are just done through imitation so you know that your child is willing and able to carry out these procedures. A lot of people always ask me, when, it, what are some signs that my child is ready for this, right? Um, and most of it has to do with children who are either uncomfortable when they're wet or soiled. Yesterday, actually, somebody said, do you think it's a sign if my uh, child comes up to me whenever they have uh, had an act, like they've gone in their, in their diaper? And yeah, it is. And it's a really good sign because the whole thing is that your child can actually feel the discomfort yeah. of being wet or soiled. Um, another sign is if they're asking about the toilet, interested in the toilet, wondering why people go to the toilet. Um, another, a lot of little girls especially just model and see that others are going to the bathroom and they'll take you by the hand and try to go to the bathroom. So if you have a child who's showing any kind of readiness signs, let's go and let's go fast. Some preparation stuff, when you want to start, on the day that you want to start, you get a potty seat with a stool or a transitional potty, right? And so there are, you put a stool in front of the toilet and you put a potty seat on top of it, or you can get one of the ones that is stool and a transitional potty. You want to have lots of underwear with cool characters or pictures or something fun. And it is totally fine, by the way, if you decide that you wanna go from, if you're doing this early and you're going from diapers to pull-ups mm -hmm. instead of going straight to underwear, that's fine too, because pull-ups nowadays, you can have less and less filling and they start to resemble underwear. But I know that kids really, like you want to make this a fun experience for the child and you want to give them an opportunity to do things that are just new to them and fun. And like a lot of kids love uh, like underwear that has the characters they like on yeah. it. Yeah. So, and you need a timer. It doesn't matter what kind of timer. It's got to be something that I, my preference for kids is a timer that actually shows the time clicking down, even makes a sound, that would be good too, because kids are always like into what's going on around them and this will help. Wipes, you wanna have wipes. Um, visual supports, uh, a picture schedule of the routine. I think I have one, a sample, but essentially just, you can print that offline, online, or uh, if you have pictures, uh, you could perhaps produce that. But essentially, it'll be like five or six pictures showing the child coming, you know, entering the bathroom, sitting on the toilet, or taking their pants down, sitting on the toilet, uh, you know, then flushing, like standing up, flushing, then going over and washing their hands. or so some sort of picture schedule. 
Uh, and there's many of these you can choose from online that you can print out. You want to have a basket full of fun things to keep the child busy. So like toys, books, bubbles, uh, I, an iPad or TV. And I know these all sound like reinforcers. They are. They're things that the child likes to do, but they're activity-based. So they're things that will keep the child on the toilet. You also need a basket of rewards, right? Candy, cookie, juice. And you want to make sure that you're not satiating your child during the day, right? So if you give your child a bunch of candy during the day, like earlier in the morning or something, they're just not going to be as motivated to, to work for those things. So these are two different baskets. And you want to have a data chart. Now you can, uh, you, it, it is your preference how you want to do a data chart. But if you go online and ask for a data chart for potty training, you'll see the main components of this data chart are you want to have the day, of course, on there, and then you want to have uh, if the child was dry when they came in, dry or wet, and if they were successful or not successful in, in their attempt to use the bathroom. And this is kind of important because you want to make sure you're progressing after a couple of days, right? That becomes sort of a reinforcer for us. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I think I, I do have a couple of samples. I'm just not sure if Traven has the accurate. I don't think he has the latest PowerPoint. So what we'll do afterwards, because there's a couple of, I, I just decided at the last minute to put in. Do you want to hold this? OK, he's, he says he's going to switch it real fast. Because I'm not sure. So I just want to show you guys some of the samples of you know, what the, the schedule that goes on the wall looks like, the visual schedule, and also the toilet data sheets, because I think a lot of parents are confused about what are some of the things that uh, are on these, you know? Yeah. And it, it's kind of important because um, the more, I guess the more resources I can give you, yeah. the better it is. And as he's pulling that up, I'll talk a little bit about your setup, kind of how you're gonna set things up. So you want to, first of all, make sure you're positioning the, the potty seat and stool in place. So that's where that's going to stay. And ideally, you want to keep that in place for the next couple of days, and everybody else in the family will use some other uh, location or some other bathroom, if that's possible. Or if you, as an adult, are using the toilet, make sure when you leave, you put the potty seat and stool back. Okay, Because we don't want your child going in and like all of a sudden it's a whole, there you go, thank you so much, Trayvon, that's great. So this is a sort of a visual schedule, as you can see, and you can move this around, do it however you like, uh, you know, find others that you can print. So first, it's like I'm taking my pants off. And by the way, this you can practice this separately before you even start the potty training procedure. So one is you take the pants down, then you take the underwear down, and then the child is sitting on the toilet, and then you can sometimes you even have like some of sometimes we will have something in the toilet like a little tissue or something that the child is going to pee pee on kids like that they have targets that uh, tar are super targets fun. Yeah. yeah in fact actually now there are companies that produce specific things for this and then you have a picture of wiping then you have a picture of flushing and then pull the underwear up and pull the pants up very very simple to do but it is helpful to have that because you're going to put this up on the wall right next to the potty so that the child also has a prompt if they ever want to look at that. So like let me just go sorry. back to the next slide. And this is a sample data sheet. And as you can see, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can have on the data sheet. But I wanted to make sure you have a sample uh, to show if it's like if the child has ha already is... Uh, uh, wet or has had a bowel movement when they come in or if they needed a prompt or didn't need a prompt and whether or not they were successful when they came in okay and that's all you do you just track that every single time that you every during the day and as you do that you will show that oh things are getting better hopefully over the course of the time that you're doing this so as I said set up stuff as you position the potty you put the extra underwear pile and the timer and wipes somewhere accessible to you. You place the activity basket within reach of the child, because remember, you want to make this fun. Now, 
I just said activity basket. Sometimes parents will go all out. They'll put a TV in the bathroom. They'll put like all kinds of stuff that excites the child, like balloons, whatever you can, in the bathroom and within reach because you want the child to enjoy this experience. It's got to be the party, right? And it's got to be a party, but you're hiding the reinforcer basket or if there is a TV, you're turning it off initially because access to those really, really important primary reinforcers, really effective reinforcers, should really happen if there is a success. You put the post, the visual routine, in an area where the child can, can see it, and because you're gonna be pointing at that each picture to help the child know what to do. And you put the data sheet somewhere safe so that you can use it, and you wanna make sure you're picking like at least three, four days when there's nothing major going on. Like you don't wanna be doing this when you're traveling. You don't, preferably you can do this on a vacation or a long weekend so that it's not interfering with school. Not for grandma's 100th birthday or Jill's uh, baby shower. Exactly. Or, or Aunt uh, Betty's wedding. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So the overall process, and I'm gonna give it to you very, very simple, four steps, is you wanna be, you, you're, and, and this is, I, I call it 15 off, five on, just so you remember. But these could be, these will change, and they could be different in the beginning as well. I picked 15 off, that means 15 minutes off the toilet and five minutes on the toilet, just because it's very unlikely that a child will have an accident in 15 minutes if they've just gone, right? Sometimes we know, because we as behaviorists have taken baseline data, we know that it's okay to do 30 minutes off, mm -hmm. five on. And if you know that your child's not gonna have an accident, you can absolutely, the longer the period of time off, the, the more progress you've made, mm -hmm. okay? So essentially, start the day with a potty party. Mm -hmm. No more pull-ups, and now you're with your child, you're like, no more pull-ups, we're throwing them away, say bye to the pull-ups, say hello to these underwear, look how cute this is, mm -hmm. isn't this awesome, make it exciting. Um, and put the underwear on and let the child feel that they're actually dry, right? And celebrate and say, look, dry undies, great, good job. And show your child your reinforcers and just tell them you can have these if pee pee and poo poo go in here and you show the child where it is. Okay, step two, we're 15 minutes free play. So you've done all that, now the child has the underwear on and you are running around having lots and lots of fun. You might want to give your child salty food so that they'll be drinking because when you're doing this training, you'll be giving them a lot of liquids. So, and you set the timer for 15 minutes. Now you take, take your child at the end of the 15 minutes, you take your child to sit on the toilet. And when you're on the toilet, you will mark the data sheet initially, what time you're going in. And if the child is wet or dry or has a bowel movement when they're taken in. Now, um, if they're, you just want to mark it. But the important thing is that you're keeping that period of time off the toilet short enough initially that when you start, hopefully you can avoid wetness. You can avoid it so that the child is like having a very positive, successful experience, okay? If they are wet or they've had a bowel movement during that 15, period, 15 minute period, you'll remove the underwear, you'll tell the child where poop or pee goes unemotionally, and you will uh, give the child a dry underwear and you'll reward them. And that'll be any time during the 15 minutes that they're off, right? So you don't have to wait until the end. We don't want our kids walking around wet for if they had a bowel movement in the first minute you will not make them wait 15 minutes. But anytime they have an accident, you take them to the bathroom, you put the, if you can, you put the bowel movement in the toilet, you remind the child, go through the visual again, and you change them so that they're dry again. This is important. Now, step three, you are now at the point where the 15 minutes is over and you're on the toilet. So they will stay there for five minutes, set the timer. The child sits on the toilet, and if they void on the toilet, if they pee on or, or poo, you will give reward, cheer, go crazy, uh, immediately remove the child from the toilet, 
put a dry undie on, reward them to, to you know, do all kinds of fun stuff. If nothing's happening, you just let them sit there for five minutes, maybe turn on the TV, or uh, not the TV because they haven't been successful, but give them the basket of activities. Keep them busy. This is not supposed to be a activity that's not fun. It's supposed to be fun. And put on the, when they're finished, put on the dry undies and have the touch a child again touch dry. One of the things a parent uh, suggested to me, and they were right, was it would be great if your child has a concept of the labels dry and wet yeah. before you're doing this, right? So they learn that you want to try to keep it dry. Again, you mark the data sheet uh, that there was either no success, a BM, or there was PP. Great. Now you're just going to repeat this process all day until bedtime, and that is where it's hard. I used to tell parents that you want to help. You don't want to be the only one doing this. You want to have uh, either, if you can have older siblings, therapists, cousins, friends, neighborhood, whatever, it, it is so much easier if you uh, only have like a two hour shift, each of you. Yeah. Um, when it's bedtime, you'll definitely go back to having a pull up. Someone had asked earlier today, what do I do to make the bedtime overnight thing successful? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is, that's a kind of a whole different phase, but the important things that you can do are not give your child liquid after like 6 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and make sure that you take your child to the toilet before they go to bed, right? This is very important. If they're not in this phase yet, if they don't know that it's okay to go to the toilet and void yet, if they're afraid of it, then make sure that you give your child a, uh, whatever they're used to, a diaper, whatever, before you take them to bed because you want to try to get a void as close as you can to their bedtime. And then you take them to bed and, and then, it, you know, sometimes parents are amazing with this kind of stuff and they'll actually even wake up early and because parents, I'm always amazed at what parents know, parents of kids on the spectrum, they're like, I know he always goes at 5 a.m. Right. I don't know how you know, but if you know, then you want to catch it before it happens. So that's the main thing. Um, and again, you want to, every time you're doing this, you're using the visual schedule every single time because you want to help the child get into a routine. If you have a child who is incredibly successful right off the bat, then the next step is to increase those periods of time off the toilet and on the toilet because what happens is you go to like 30 minutes if you can very slowly guys yeah. like from 15 to 16 to 17 to 80 very gradually you don't want to have you don't want to go so fast and increase the time so that your child has an accident that is not the point of this you want to do well and and of course if your child's gotten the message they will void as soon as they sit on the toilet yeah. which is really really good and remember our goal here is not to teach bowel movement training. Your goal here is to teach pee, -pee training. Yeah, okay, first things is, first. First things first. Bowel movements are a little bit different, and a lot of our parents know that our kids have, not only do they have a specific time of day or times of day yeah. that they go, um, and you can always predict that. It's like right after he eats or right. in the afternoon at 3 o'clock. And the other thing is they have tells. Like the child to go in a closet and hide, or you can always tell from their body movements that they're yeah. uncomfortable and getting to that point where they really need to know. I'm always incredibly amazed with behavior technicians who know this about the kids they're working yeah. with. Yeah, 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 they recognize the sign. Yeah, it's amazing. So for the next few days, maybe two or three days, you, you want to keep doing this until the child gets a routine in their head, right? You're gradually increasing the time off the toilet. If this is not working, reduce uh, the time, it says tie, reduce the time off the toilet. In other words, if you are still having accidents, then you know that 15 minutes is too long. Yeah. So, and you want to start with 10 minutes and five minutes, whatever it is, and increase the time on the toilet. So you reverse it right. so that you have to find your child's baseline of success. 15 and 5 is usually more than enough, right? In fact, I'll say probably if I was going to go off the top of my head, probably somewhere around 30 and 5 is usually successful. But 
It depends on how much liquid your child is taking in. It depends on their size. Depends on how much else they're eating. It really varies. Um, for bowel movements, as I said, keep track of, because you're going to be so focused on your child's uh, schedule. You're going to be with your child the whole time. Keep track of the times they have bowel movements, because this is going to really help you when you start focusing on the BMs, right? And doing this whole thing again with the BMs. After you are at a point of one hour off the potty without accidents, it's time to teach your child to ask for potty, right? Until mm -hmm. now you were taking them. So now when you take the child, you want them, you, you'll ask, and you can model this. If it's a nonverbal child, you can touch an icon. You're gonna teach the child to touch an icon. We've done this where we're doing other things with the child and there's a little sign or a picture or icon of the child on the toilet in the room where we're working with the child on the table, on the wall. It's accessible so that every once in a while we'll point to him and say, do you have to go? And then the child will say, I have to go. And you want to model this in whatever part of their vocal lingo or program you're at, okay? Yeah, that's kind of where pair the icon or picture, then fade your schedule further. The whole goal of this is to be able to get out there with your child without them having diapers on, right? So if you're gonna go out, you wanna make sure that you're increasing the schedule to the point where you can go out. If there's an accident, do not overreact and get mad. Just repeat the schedule at shorter intervals. Let's say we're at the 30 minute mark and I decide, oh, I'm gonna increase this to 35. Oh, my child has an accident, no big deal. Go back to 30, get success, then do 32. Do a slower incre increase of the time frame. okay? Make sure that you are throwing a party whenever they're successful. This is uh, the stuff you always tell me too. It's like reinforce, go crazy, turn the TV on, give them everything they want. Go very gradually. Some kids need three or four days of this repetition before the routine has come in for them. Uh, early on, for boys, decide if you're gonna be doing standing or sitting. Do not go back and forth. Okay. Pick one. And this is a, f a family choice, it really is. Yeah. Like, it's completely up to you. Uh, it, sometimes it's easier for boys if they're standing because they like to see that they're making like a tissue or a colored item inside the toilet uh, a different color. Right. But sometimes families prefer that even if it's a boy, they're sitting. It is entirely up to you. That's the behavior you wanna model. I, uh, there's a, a little trick, which is putting a little piece of toilet paper in the toilet for the male child to aim at. Because if you are standing, one of the things that happens is aiming. You have to teach the child yeah. to aim by holding. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, because they will go all over the place because yes. they don't know that they can hold their wee wee and do it correctly, right? Yes. They're like all over the place. Um, re you're, in the beginning, you are rewarding for just voiding then you are going to be rewarding for the whole routine. Now remember, everything that I said, you, the reward right now is for just voiding. You're doing all the other stuff. You're doing the pulling the pants down, the, the so on and so on. If your child is able to do all of that stuff, great. But we're not expecting it here. What you're doing is you're expecting the child to be, to be voiding once you've taken their pants and their underwear and help them get on the potty, okay? And later you're also doing the rest. And the, the whole hand washing thing is a whole different routine. This is really important. What we do in ABA, we do task analysis. So every step is its own lesson. You're not doing 10 lessons at the same time. You'll teach them separately and then you'll chain them, okay? So you will teach the parts of the routine separately. You can be working on this later, it doesn't matter, but until your child knows how to pull their pants down and pull their underwear down, that's one lesson. Uh, sitting on the toilet, that's a whole different thing. Pulling up, completely different thing. And in, if you're doing a dressing undressing program in, in your ABA program or separately, you'll be teaching those things and it is wonderful because then you can reward the child for the whole routine. 
Hand washing, completely different thing. And often what we do is we teach hand washing in a backward chaining procedure. That means anything, you can teach everything in a backward chaining procedure. I find it to be very useful. What it means is that you write out the steps. I've written them out here for you, like for hand washing. You turn on the water, you wet the hands, you put soap on hands, you rub hands, you rinse, and you turn off, and you dry hands. Those are the, the steps. You can do a visual schedule for this as well. With backward chaining, you help the child with all the steps except for the last one. So initially, you'll do all of them, and then what you'll do is you'll do all of them, and when it comes to drying hands, you start to fade yourself out. So yeah. you give the child a tissue or a cloth or towel, and you'll help them initially, you'll model it, but then that's the one that you want to sh get yourself out of, and you will get the child to do that. Now, we've mastered drying hands, so the next day you'll be turning on water, wetting hands, put soap on hands, rub hands, rinse, and then now you're going to help the child turn off the water. So you gradually eliminate yourself. You take yourself out of each of the steps, starting with the last one. And you work your way up so that the child is now just depending on their visual schedule for prompts. Now, generalization is really important as well because all you've accomplished when you've done all of this is that you've learned how to do potty training in your house in that one toilet. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're doing this in different places of the house. You want to make sure that you are using now different toilets. Let's say you're the grandparents' house, a friend's house. It, this is important, guys. Do not assume that, and school, of course, do not assume that because your child has had success, they're going to be okay everywhere. That's just not going to happen. So you want to make sure that you do at least a couple of hours of the same routine and make sure your child's successful in other places. Some of the things that parents often talk to me is there's a fear of using the toilet. So, you know, and that's very common. So you can use the transitional potties that they have, which are outside of the toilet. Gradually shape going in and sitting on the toilet. Make sure that you get your child comfortable with that before you start the process. Sometimes kids are out of control with flushing because they like that. It's a self cemetery type thing. Don't allow them. That means, though, that it's rewarding to them, right? They're, right? they're trying to gain access to the flush. Don't allow them to do that unless they void it. If they have voided, then it's a treat. Yep. They can do it. Some kids have a fear of flushing. If that's the case where children will be afraid of the sounds, make sure that you actually either get a silent toilet, which there are many, or give the child headphones so that they're not afraid uh, and don't flush when you're right in the middle of the training. You don't want anything to scare your child. You want to make sure of that. It, want, it has to be a positive experience. If the child wants to play with toilet paper, do not allow that. Uh, the, the rule is to only use toilet paper when they void. Okay, this is very important too. Um, you want, a child might want to play with the toilet water. You want to make sure you avoid that lock the toilet as soon as you can. This is really important. It's not sanitary, and this is yeah. one of those things that kids, um, you just don't want them to focus on this because they'll start throwing objects in the toilet as well. If any of these things happen, this is, you have to block it, you have to avoid it. Don't allow the child to do that. Just a couple of comments on the bowel movements. Children are sometimes afraid of pooping in the toilet. They're like wondering, where does everything go? It looks like this thing is going to suck me in here. It's scary. This is okay. You want to do the pee-pee training first, the poop training after a while, not a big deal. You can also have the child drop poop from the diaper into the toilet, or you can drop poop from the potty into the toilet so that they learn it's not... And, celebrate it so that they get comfortable with it and understand it's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, it really helps with bowel movements if you know a specific time. And make sure you're not doing this with children who have diarrhea or are constipated. Yeah. This is a very, very important. And I think that's my actually last slide. One thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, a good technique is to have the child feel the dry uh, underwear and all the time reward dry underwear as opposed to wet underwear. 
That so oh, it. I'm highly suggestible. So this has made me need to use the restroom. Oh, please. Uh, I, I'm sat here and crossed my legs. Uh, I'd like to take a short break. Yes. And then uh, so that I can get out and use the restroom. And then would you like to come back and answer questions for the couple of minutes that we have left of this? And then I'll join you at the top of that hour. Is Absolutely, that okay? Absolutely, yes. Because you've got some questions that have come in. So oh. forgive me. Uh, the bladder has just said we'll it's be back hour in, 43. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Stick with us. Don't forget, you can watch Ask Dr. Doreen live every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time.